Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of It's Called a Podcast, Sweetheart. I'm here with Pinkstar. Hey everyone, it's so nice to be here once again with all of you. And we are back in this lovely month of September. Well, it's not September when we're recording, but it will be by the time this episode comes out. So hopefully it's a lovely September. I'd hate for it to be one of those sucky ones, you know? And hopefully there's still hype in everyone for the recent news that just got released about Zootopia 2 at the D23. Oh yeah, I know I'm still going to be hyped. In fact, I am still hyped. So, let's start off by talking a little bit about some of the news that's come out since the last episode. Because of the way last episode was, it's going to be only like a little bit of news, because we rushed that out episode out like just a few days before this, we record for this one. So, the only major news to cover is that we confirmed that Jared Bush is the sole director of Zootopia 2, not with Byron Howard. Oh, that's a bit, a bit um, of a bummer, bummer. Like, I really wanted for Byron Howard to direct once again. Well, yeah, but if anyone is fully capable of doing so, it is definitely Jared Bush. He was brought in to work on the first Zootopia as his first ever movie, and he's basically been, like, right there with Byron Howard the entire time. He's like a protege, almost. All right. Mm-hmm. So, I I have full confidence in Jared Bush. In fact, I think this is his solo directorial debut, so this will be cool. And Byron is definitely still involved in some capacity like we don't know exactly what but there's no way he's not at least like giving his input when it's asked for you know yeah because well let's remember the initial concept of Zootopia came from him so yeah but Jared was working with him the entire time as well like from the earliest of drafts when it was still a spy thriller they basically came up with it together all right well then let's just uh be uh waiting until our more news are released. Yes, exactly. And let's not forget, this doesn't mean Byron isn't doing anything else. He's currently working on a new secret project, which is very exciting because last time we, he did that, we got Encanto. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yes, yes. I was mm-hmm. really expecting of them to create um, a new movie that it will involve a Latin American culture. Well... From my part, considering, well, in my case, that's... Well, for my case, well, I am Latin American, so we already got Coco from Pixar, so it was nice to have now another movie from Disney that we could see more of that Latin American culture, in this case, Colombia. Exactly, and it was such a good movie, too. But remember, we don't talk about Bruno. No, but we can sing about him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and... Then, one last piece of news that came from D23 was that there is going to be something cool coming to the parks. Which brings us to our very special surprise for this episode. Drum roll, please. We have a guest. Now, this guest has asked to remain anonymous because they are a current employee of Disney Parks. And... You never know what someone might say, and just for the sake of safety and privacy, we've agreed to let him remain anonymous. So, for now, let's refer to him as, uh, what can we call you for anonymous sake? How about just, uh, N.W.? N.W. Definitely not Nick Wilde, just N.W. I'll just call you N. That cool? That is absolutely uh, fine. All right. Okay, well, got it. Welcome on to the podcast, Dan. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I know that I'm trying to get my own kind of thing started as well in in terms of uh, intel and surveying what's going on in the parks and um, probably providing information to especially first time and talk about what is going on with the parks and why it's taking so doggone long it is land over in the American parks. Yeah, and for our listeners, we apologize for any connection issues with this. We're doing our best, but we're working with what we got in terms of making this 
podcast and interview work. So please forgive any right with the audio. Any audio issues, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I preferred my term. Uh, okay, okay. It, the technical term is... <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, now we're introducing our special guest. Well, that come, we can go with directly with the topic of this episode that we'll be talking about uh, the presence that Zootopia has in general at the Disney parks. Exactly. And you're something of an expert on that, aren't you, Anne? I would say so, um, and that's just only just from um, my own intel. Uh, I want to make it absolutely clear that this is just going to be pure speculation. Yes, there are certain facts that I do know of, um, but uh, nothing that requires me to uh, go backstage or go to restricted areas and say, oh, hey, I know what's going to happen in the next few years. Um, the next few years, uh, as far as I know, is, is exactly what they pitched to us um, about, um, a, I guess it's been a week uh, since D23 at this point. So that's as much as I know uh, at the moment. But I will uh, say that I do have a little bit of info pertaining to um, uh, Zootopia um, together, Zoo together. Um, I'm trying to get used to those together. I, I, yeah, it's not the best of names. Yeah, yeah, not not the best of names, but uh, hey, you know what? Uh, when in Rome or when in Zootopia, I guess in this case. Um, <laughs> but um, what I do know is that uh, they have been taking a look at the uh, current. Uh, it's tough to be a bug key line, and they're um, looking at it and marking at th marking things and. Um, it's on its way to its uh, Zootopia transformation. I don't know what they're going to add in there. Uh, I don't think I'll know until previews uh, begin, which I do intend to um, do so if they were to have previews, because sometimes they do preview. Uh, sometimes they have attractions for cast previews, sometimes they don't. In the case of uh, one example, Rise of the Resistance over in... Um, Galaxy's Edge. They did not provide us with uh, cast previews for that for some reason, but uh, okay. regardless. So, just for a bit of clarification, you have worked, you do currently work at the parks. Which park exactly? Is it Disneyland or Disney World? So, um, Disneyland is going to be out in California. I am at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. Um, okay, okay, cool. Just for clarification. Yeah, I recently transferred to uh, Epcot. Okay. Cool. Oh, nice. Very fun. And previously, you were working with Animal Kingdom or Magic Kingdom, Kingdom. or okay. Animal Kingdom is the only park that I have not been to, so this is just um, stuff that I have observed uh, personally. But uh, now I know that they gave us a release date or opening dates of the New Zootopia show. Yeah, winter twenty twenty five. And, you know, if you ask me, I think that's kind of vague. I mean, do they mean November or December uh, 2025, or do they mean, like, January to March of uh, 2025? Uh, I mean... I would say it's most likely going to be, uh, like, December 2025, because Zootopia 2 will release about the 25th of November. Now, that's so... usually the census, but um, one example I'm going to draw for from is um, one of the last coasters we opened up, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewinds. That opened up a whole year before uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 released. So undoubtedly, uh, during that period, they probably called the uh, actors to come in to film for Volume 3. Uh, I Am Groot, um, which is a series of shorts on Disney+, Plus. which, I mean, it's basically just Vin Diesel uh, speaking into a mic saying, I Am Groot. And uh, because this special, um, that, that all of which proceeded uh, before uh, the climactic uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So um, using that logic, uh, I do speculate that uh, perhaps with the voice uh, work that the um, voice actors previously uh, performed um, previously in the year, um, and we know that uh, Jennifer Goodwin especially uh, reported that she uh, was in the midst of um, voice acting. So undoubtedly, exactly. they're done with that. 
and they've had Jason Bateman in the booth. Oh, yeah, yeah. But undoubtedly, they not only uh, voiced for Zootopia 2, but my guess is that they also voiced for uh, the upcoming uh, show as well, because, I mean, wh why not um, execute two birds with a stone uh, right there? Um, I, I would think that's uh, what... I don't know if they clump all that together, but that's just my guess, that they were to clump uh, voice work uh, together or any sort of projects that would otherwise tie into Disney attractions and film. By that logic, uh, 2025 in general, even if it's not winter in January or March or November or December, it's very safe to say that any time in 2025, be it before or after the release of the film, would be a perfect time to uh, promote or cross-promote the uh, sequel. Mm -hmm. True, true. I will say that typically in meetings like this where they announce stuff like that they're talking in terms of fiscal year in terms of fiscal quarters so q4 is winter typically and that is october november december so i don't know it varies like it's they were vague about it yeah so, uh, the, I, I really thought that they would talk more about the um show um the portion that it was announced i did not appreciate that they basically pulled a yakko and just like here's this and here's that yada, 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 yada. it's like okay guys, can, can we have a uh, just one segment on test track one segment on a lounge um built right behind uh space of earth uh, or a, a segment on zootopia yeah you know, you know I, I i didn't as entertaining as it looked to be and to be honest uh i had work early the next morning so it's just like Okay, guys, look, uh, I, it's not that I don't appreciate the song and dance, but I mean, I, I'm just here for the news. Come on, come on. But um, mm -hmm. Well, they literally gave a song and dance with a performance of Try yeah, Everything. That's true, yes. No complaints about, you know, references to Try Everything. So it says that it's going to be at the Tree of Life Theater. Correct. Uh, replacing It's Tough to Be a Bug, and uh, it has shown signs of decay, uh, one of the last times I went to go see It's Stuff to Be a Bug, the impressive audio animatronic for Hopper, for example, was not present uh, whatsoever. And usually whenever um, we see audio animatronics in a state of disrepair or have not been repaired since God only knows, then um, that is a sign that it's on its way out, that uh, Disney is ready to replace it with uh, some something else uh, normally uh, it, it, there's there I don't know any instances in which they decided to update the audio animatronics like for example I'm sure they could have done that with uh, Splash Mountain but I'm not going to get into the it's all the stuff about that but the point is now we have something um, new in its place um, yeah I've, I've just noticed um, and it's had been such a long time since I last did it's stuff to be a bug that it's like yeah, they're ready to let this go. Um, and I, oh gosh, I actually can't remember if it was a time. Um, no, you know what? I think it was at a time after they first announced the uh, Zootopia show. Zootopia Plus? Or the Zootopia show at the park? Oh, uh, the new Zootopia show at the park. Okay, okay. And do you think it's going to be an animatronic show then? Well, I don't think it's filled with audio animatronics um as awesome as it would be to um see an audio animatronic of nick and judy and believe you me i would love to just have a chance to just hug a nick wilde animatronic uh just for you know hmm. reasons but um this right here what i'm about to share is public information so this is safe we do know that there will be a Clawhauser audio animatronic, so undoubtedly they're probably just going to copy and paste, as it were, what they have for the Shanghai uh, audio animatronic. Um, we do know that there is a Judy Hopps animatronic that run, run, goes around on roller skates. So that's, um, okay. I don't. That's a roaming character, much as I wish uh, she would be. It seems to me that that. Um, yeah, so, uh, the Judy Hopps um, Stuntronics, as they call it, that's an audio animatronic that uses stunts. Um, the only other example I can pull from is over in Disneyland, they have a Spider-Man audio animatronic, 
that is uh, programmed and designed to uh, make it look like once in the air he's swinging webs and doing uh, stunts. Uh, so Isn't that the one that just like crashed into the wall or something? At one point, it did crash into the uh, wall. <laughs> did here. I, I know Deadpool made fun of that during the show. Oh, oh he did. Yes. Um, <laughs> now I don't know the status of the Judy um, stunt animatronic. Uh, I don't know if they have it um, in Shanghai. If it, if they did have it in Shanghai, I would believe there would have been photo and uh, video. Of it, uh, there's uh, plenty of audio animatronics that they say that they're going to put in the park, say like a baby Groot, but uh, we've never seen that in the parks. Um, we, we have videos of a baby Groot uh, somewhere where they're testing him out, but never have we seen him in the parks. Fair enough, though we have seen some very cool ones in the parks too, like the BB-8s or BD-1s, whatever they're called, the little droids that walk around in Star Wars Land. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I, I know probably Disneyland's Galaxy's Edge is more than likely to have room around uh, droids than the one over here in Hollywood Studios. Makes sense. So technically, this Utopia Better Together is basically a 3D film attraction, from what we can imagine. From what we can see from the new poster they provided us, uh, it's undoubtedly going to be a 3D slash 4D experience. It's tough to be a bug was just that as well. So, you know, put, put a pair of uh, glasses on and it made it look like uh, bugs were mm, right okay. the face. I thought that, see, I haven't actually been to the parks in years upon years upon years. So I am very much out of the loop in that regard. So I, when you mentioned a hopper animatronic, I thought you were saying it was an animatronic show. I uh, don't know. No. Like, I do remember that because, uh, well... If I may say, well, I went to the Disney park some years ago and I don't remember when I went to It's Tough to Be a Buck. I actually went there twice because it was raining the day we went to Animal Kingdom and we were trying to take some place where we could rest and not get wet. So we <laughs> went to this, um, the wait line was um, actually very short. So it didn't take much of us to go there twice. And to see, um, well, like it was mentioned previously, like a 3D slash 4D because we just um, take our, they give us out uh, the 3D glasses. We sit down in a, in a room as if we were in a theater of some sort. And we see the the characters coming out on screen, but also we the, give us the 4D feeling like the chairs are moving around, are shaking. They are some. Um, they are splashing a bit of water in our faces or something, or smells around. Like it mm -hmm. really gives us that li that little 4D vibe. Like it's not just watching the this um, attraction in 3D, but also kind of like make the feel as if we were with the characters of some sort. It's also this practically works the same with Mickey's filler magic in Magic Kingdom. Correct. Uh, whenever we do okay. have the uh, uh, 4D uh, shows, such as Still Our Magic, Muppet um, 3, Muppet Vision, yeah, Muppet Vision 3D, and It's Tough to Be a Bug, uh, among probably other shows that they've had, like uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Audience, a uh, long, long, long time ago. But um, when we uh, do shows like that, we want to not only make it look and feel like the characters are coming right at you or say like, uh, for example, um, uh, Mickey's Fill Our Magic, it has a collection of some of the most classic of Disney songs in there. So maybe one minute you're um, singing Be Our Guest, the next you're um, underwater with Ariel with her um, uh, part of your world. So for example, uh, part of your world, when she uh, gets to the parts, like you want thingamabobs, I've got 20. She, she actually um, throws all of these uh, jewels out into the crowd and it actually makes it look like they're right there in front of you. So it's. I actually tried to grab oh, the jewels big. for the fun of it. I knew I couldn't, but I still did it. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of fun to see uh, all these guests uh, that they actually reach out trying to uh, grab all these jewels that are just grabbing <laughs> it seems there's also times during these 4d uh, cool. shows where they will uh, spray you with water uh, depending on the effect um, I know Muppet Vision 3d has a moment where they actually uh, blow bubbles to make it look like it's coming out of the screen 
Um, and uh, almost any, every uh, 3D, 4D show will have um, also smells as well. So be our guest, for instance, at Feel Our Magic, it actually conveys the smells of the food being presented. So mm. once again, um, that, that prompts the uh, guests to reach out and try to uh, grab the gray stuff or anything else that's uh, floating in front mm. of them. Or for instance, cool. there's a section of A Whole New World and it feels like you are riding on carpet. As it feels like you were flying over Agrava. That is very cool. Yeah, it's, it's very, very thrilling. Um, so I can only imagine what they'll do for Zootopia then. The bug, it does have a moment where they have a rather displeasing smell uh, from a uh, stink bug. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what in the world they could um, have um, smells for a Zootopia show. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Maybe he shows up and he, um, you can probably smell his pies, I guess. Uh, I don't know. That's that's one thing that I'm thinking off the top of my head. I really didn't give it much thought, if I'm to be honest. But um, I don't know. Maybe They get drenched and then you smell like wet dog or something. like hmm. That wouldn't be pleasant. I, I mean, I, for, and from what I can tell from the poster anyway, uh, there are uh, some of our favorite characters that are wearing 3D glasses. Uh, at the moment, the 3D glasses for It's Tough to Be a Bug are designs like uh, uh, bug antennas or bug eyebrows or something like that. Uh, so undoubtedly, they probably will redesign it. I don't know how, but it's probably seen on the poster as, as we, uh, um, once again, no doubt saw. Um, I know that the queue line before entering the theater, they have parody posters of um, Broadway musicals, but how uh, bugs would uh, uh, portray them. Mm -hmm. So uh, in true Zootopia fashion, my speculation, um, perhaps uh, we'll see, say, like um, how they like to parody movie posters of uh, films that are uh, upcoming or current. Uh, as they do, or as they did for the first Utopia, and of course how we recently saw with uh, D23, so mm -hmm. I don't know that's, that's, or you know what maybe they could even take it a step further and uh, showcase um, uh, Zootopia versions of Disney attractions, uh, mm -hmm. I, I think That'd be cool. That would be, yes I love that. I just have to wait and see what they decide Once to again, do. this is all speculation. Yeah. And but what's not speculation, you were telling us you had a little bit of knowledge about some of the behind-the-scenes stuff with the parks? So, as far as um, inside intel, um, uh, I really don't have much, if I'm going to be uh, honest. Okay. Well, not about this in particular, but... I, I, I have heard that um, there may have been a suggestion made by someone, I don't know who, um, and that suggestion was made to put um, an element within the queue. Uh, I don't think it's going to be anything big or anything groundbreaking, um, but should that appear, I, I will be able to point it out. Okay. All right. What, what do you mean an element within the queue, though? Like just something in the line? Like... Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, All right. that will be a speculation for, in this case, for the future, right, at Animal Kingdom. But now mm -hmm. I would like to talk about what has been the past and the current presence that Sutopi has in general throughout the Disney parks in the world. Well, because yes. if we remember well, the characters officially debuted as um, in Disneyland, where they, in California Adventure, if I'm not wrong where um, sh practically almost at the same time that the film debuted it, um, the characters were able were able to meet them at Disney California Adventure. You yeah, could, the actors um, in costumes. Take, go and yeah. take pictures with them and such. And in the case of Magic Kingdom at um, Walt Disney World, you could see the characters and dance with them at this um, parade that was called Move It, Shake It, Dance and Play It. Like it features a lot of Disney characters where you can um, dance with them at what we see at the center of Main Street, you say. Uh, well, outside of it, but um, like say below what will be um, Cinderella's castle. 
that is uh, no longer um, going on at the uh, parks. Uh, no, I know that. They, they, they changed it. I know that. Like, But Nick and Judy were a part of that at the time. Yeah, they were part of it. Um, unfortunately, Walt Disney World here in Orlando, Florida does not have a permanent meet and greet for Nick and Judy. My hopes is that uh, when this uh, New Zootopia show premieres at Animal Kingdom, uh, to better together, uh, I do hope that that means that they're going to have a more permanent presence in Animal Kingdom, which they have not had a presence at Animal Kingdom until recently. And by recently, I mean the week of Earth Day. Earth Day is also the anniversary of Animal Kingdom. Very fitting for a park like that. Mm -hmm. that, that this week, uh, they actually had Nick and Judy available to meet as a complete surprise to guests. Really? Um, yes. Uh, so, so only for two particular days in that week did they have um, them available uh, to meet, so, which... Um, I happened to be there one day and happened to be in uh, my Zootopia stuff because why wouldn't you, you know, you dress as uh, Nick Wilde at, in an animal park because... Of course. Yeah, Disney bounding. And then, uh, um, what do you know, they, they're right there and it's like, oh my gosh, yes, yes, let's, let's do it. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So you got a picture of yourself with them? Oh, yes I did. I most certainly did. I was also there to um, ride Dinosaur one last time. Uh, I'm not a big fan personally, but I thought may as well uh, do mm -hmm. so as it's going to be uh, transformed into Indiana Jones. I also know that the reason why they are so quick to build an Akanto attraction is because Lin-Manuel Miranda, he says that he refuses to do any more Encanto projects with Disney until oh. after they've in the parks. Oh. All right. Okay. Well, hmm. what I do remember is that uh, Judy and Nick did have a temporary meet and greet at uh, Magic Kingdom. Um, I don't remember. It was some years ago where usually when you enter the park and at the center of Main Street USA, usually when there's this, where's the flag? There's the flags. Um, yes. You actually, usually you meet Chip and Dale when you enter the park, but there was a there was a time where you could meet and Judy and Nick. You could go and take a picture with them and autographs and everything. But it was temporary. And also, from what I know, there are there have been some occasions where there has been this um, special parties like after hour. Um, like only few guests are able to get this um, special interaction with characters in general, where they get to dance with them but it's also is almost at night night time like um after the parks close ob obviously and, and they make this um this parties and such and you see many of the disney characters that are not frequent at the parks that includes judy and nick that make some special appearances in this um parties mm-hmm uh, yes, that, that is correct. Uh, now, referring to the uh, temporary meet and greet that you first mentioned at Magic Kingdom, that I noticed was uh, during the year of 2019. Uh, each day, they, uh, each day of the week, they would have rare characters uh, that would normally wouldn't be uh, seen. I think like uh, one day they would have like Chicken Little and um, his girlfriend. I can't remember her name. Abby. Yeah, Abby. I guess. Another day it would be uh, Robin Hood and Little John, I think. Um, Walking through the forest, do da lolly, do da lolly, golly, what a day. Another day they would have like Phineas and Ferb, so they just kind of switch characters out. But uh, the day that I noticed particularly uh, was Friday for Nick and Judy. So uh, moving uh, down here, I tried to um, see them as, as often as I could because I never knew uh, how long have this meet and greet and yeah you did mention the uh, parties um, there was a time when they were at the um, Mickey's not so scary Halloween party um, as a um, way to just uh, dance through the streets as somewhat of a grand marshal if you will before the um, uh, boo to you parade um, but um, more sort of more permanent ish it was um, the Mickey's uh, Very Merry Christmas Parties, where they 
would set up a meet and greet over in Tomorrowland starting the very year they had uh, Zootopia premiere. So uh, I was uh, very, very much excited about that. And since then, I have made it an absolute Christmas tradi uh, tradition to ensure that I uh, saw them uh, year after year at the Christmas party. Now, I did notice that just last year, they changed things up a little bit. Um, during the Christmas parties, instead of a uh, meet and greet uh, for them, and they also have uh, these new Christmas scarves that they wear as well. Oh, yes. But um, they come out for a dance party over in Tomorrowland, so they uh, dance to some Disney tunes. And, and they don't sell those scarves? <laughs> Uh, they do not sell the scarves. I wish they did. Dang it, Disney. What is what is going on with the merchandise? You've got so many cool ideas. None of them happen. You know, we don't see a whole lot of that over here unless if you're in either Tokyo Disneyland, Hong Kong Disneyland, or Shanghai Disneyland, especially uh, Shanghai Disneyland. Yes. Asia gets all the cool stuff. One of the reasons why uh, it's taken so long just to put Zootopia into Animal Kingdom in the first place, I mean, you would say, think it's like, oh, hey, it's a no -brainer. Yeah, it's a match made in heaven, yeah. Yeah. Well, the problem is mostly the fans of Animal Kingdom, because when Animal Kingdom was conceptualized, it was that um, almost anything and everything had to have to do with um, conservation. It needed a message of conservation, it needed to fall in line with that. Uh, I mean, we've got two shows over there, a Nemo show and a Lion King show that have nothing to do with conservation and nobody's batting an eyelash on that. But mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why, especially about, uh, I think it was about two, three years back uh, when they pitched that blue sky uh, idea of a Moana and a Zootopia land in Animal Kingdom. That's kind of partly the reason why a year later they backtracked and said, okay, how about um, Indiana Jones and Encanto instead? Uh, something that I'm, I'm not quite sure why they, they wanted to go with that when neither have anything to do with animals aside from mm -hmm. Maribel having a brother that talks to animals and the, the one yeah. throwaway line in, in Indiana Jones that he hates snakes. But That's like anti-conservation. Hmm... Yeah, but regardless, um... Disney, you should put a Zootopia land in there instead. You've already done it once. Uh, pretty much let their voices be heard and said, hey, we don't want Zootopia in there because it doesn't fit conservation, it's this, it's that, it's... Um, oh, uh, it's supposed to be animals acting like animals, not animals in a human environment. Oh, it's gonna... Uh, oh. Boo. And it's in Boo. <laughs> Boo. It's like, who cares? Who cares, mm -hmm. honestly? But, um, I mean, I have some ideas of my own of where else they could put it in Animal Kingdom uh, should they ever do so. Um, we also um, had some problems with um, Imagineering as well uh, when it comes to it. But I do know, I do know this much, that mm -hmm. Imagineering currently they do want to put Zootopia Land in Walt Disney World. It's either going to be end up in Disney World or Disneyland. Personally, I prefer prefer both, mm -hmm. um, especially since Disneyland will be uh, expanding uh, with uh, something called Disneyland Forward. But Disneyland or World? Disneyland Forward. This would be okay. um, California. I didn't realize they had room to expand in California. Well, um, they recently got approval from the Californian government to expand. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Good here in a number of years, because this is still early, or early uh, conceptualized um, concept, but um, we could hear in the coming years that uh, they plan to um, expand out past the two parks they have right now and add in four themed lands. Well, mm -hmm. Disney World, the sky's the limit. I mean... Yeah, you got tons of land out there. Oh, yeah. Well, it's twice the size of Manhattan, and that's exactly what our founder, Walt Disney, wanted in the first place. He noticed mm -hmm. that one of the problems at Disneyland is that you could see the outside world from certain areas. So he made sure to uh, purchase as much land as possible for um, Walt Disney World. But um, mm -hmm. if I could get back on track here. Um, so... Yeah. Um, I know that the Imagineers want to um, put Zootopia lands um, somewhere in Walt Disney World. Certainly not Epcot. 
although it almost came to Epcot, not in the form of his Utopia Land, but more so in the uh, form of just a fun activity uh, for kids. We previously had a, an announcement uh, years back uh, called the Play Pavilion, um, but uh, we um, canceled that because we realized the technology we were going to use for that would be outdated by the time we would start uh, work on that, and that was before okay. the pandemic. There, um, Hollywood Studios, I believe, probably might have uh, space. Uh, Magic Kingdom, I will say this much, okay? Besides the recent announcement of a Cars Land and a uh, highly anticipated Villains Land. Yeah, that looked cool. Oh, yeah. It had also been rumored, and it probably still hangs as a rumor, that Zootopia Land could be coming to Magic Kingdom. Okay. It did fit. That would be nice. Here's the other problem. Uh, so Shanghai uh, was first up to that to get the Zootopia lands, mm -hmm. and the reason why that's a problem is let me uh, take another attraction for an example, and this is the only example I have as such. Tron Light Cycle Run. That's okay. an attraction that we uh, opened up about a year ago, I think, uh, over in Magic Kingdom. So uh, the reason why it took uh, so long to get that built, besides the pandemic, the pandemic was also reason number one. Obviously. Um, Shanghai Disneyland builds, it's going to be under a exclusivity contract. So any new attraction that hasn't already been in a Disney park uh, that's in Shanghai, or so Shanghai is original or exclusive. Mm-hmm. Um, it cannot be replicated until a certain amount of years later. Uh, I feel uh. that the third is about five years. Uh, someone said that they thought it was seven. I don't know if the contract has been updated or not, but um, I do know that one of the reasons why we did not hear anything about a Zootopia Land at this year's D23 is more than likely that it's under... Uh, Exclusivity. It does make sense. It does make sense. Though, like, it is a shame because it's proven to be a huge success there, right? Oh, yes. Uh, well, at yeah. least we could be um, grateful that at least we have, we're have. we going to have something Zootopia, finally. Uh, in the case of, um, what was it? Uh, Walt Disney World. Yes, because, mm -hmm. well, like I mentioned previously, um, ever since the movie debuted, at least in Disneyland, uh, you are able to meet them at California Adventure ever since up until mm -hmm. today. But for instance, in Disneyland Paris, there's practically nothing Zootopia. The right. only uh, uh, occasions where you get to see Judy and Nick at Paris, it's on Tuesday Guest Star Day, where random characters get to see, um, just are dancing around in the main part of like uh, the yeah, same, yeah. Main Street, USA. And mm -hmm. for the only thing I also... I can't remember is that there was this special event called Disney Fan Days where you could see a lot of the Disney characters that are not exactly that much popular. They are not mainstream, but mm -hmm. you could see them in this particular um, event. Like there was there was different sections of this um, of this um, special um, occasion. And there was this um, show that was called, uh, that, uh, I don't remember exactly what it was called, but it started uh, Max and Goofy. And in here, like, well, Max was the kind of like the star of the show. And mm -hmm. he invited, it, it, it seemed like he invited tons of Disney characters to come up with, um, to celebrate with him, to be on stage mm -hmm. with him. And the first characters that came up on stage with him were precisely Judy and Nick. They okay. danced, tried everything with, and actually sang it with him. Like, hmm. um, Max sang on stage. Well, and as also, much as the characters in costume sing. Exactly. And obviously, both Jennifer Goodwin and Jason Bateman um, reprised their roles and they sang with Max on stage. <laughs> so that was oh, really? really cool. Yes. I didn't know about that. You could check it on on YouTube, like you put Disney fan days. I think it, I think it was in 2019, from what I remember, and it was really cool to see that there was also kind of like a, a sort of parade. Well, I, I don't know exactly if it's called parade, but uh, you could see the characters um, 
like walking down through, make a huge line where you, the character was just um, waving at the audience, everybody. And there were tons of Disney characters that you usually don't see. Like you could see a, a characters from Atlantis, from Treasure Planet, mm -hmm. and what else? Uh, yeah. You could see Roger Rabbit. That sword. Now that we're on the topic of the Nick and Judy in costume, one thing that's been pretty consistent throughout the years is unashamed flirting between those two. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, now that is something I have noticed more so in the Asian part. Too much. Too much. Well, or even in the American parks, they do that. No, 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 no. Oh, no. They do not right. do that in the American parks. I can go on record to tell you they do not do that. It, we, uh, they are under um, the strict um, understanding that Nick and Judy over here are nothing more than friends and not lovers. Really? But, well, it's still, they're crossing the line a little bit. I said they tease each other a lot, but it can be taken in a platonic way or something more, but... It's, it's unfortunate, but I can tell you firsthand, especially uh, when it comes to drawing characters uh, over here, the character integrity is super, super strict. So they want to make sure that everything is intact and nothing borders on uh, fan or uh, fan speculation. Um, so I would think that the Asian parts, they don't have too much of a... Uh, uh, strict hold on that, especially Tokyo. Tokyo uh, Disneyland, even though that's a Disney park. It is technically owned by a different company, yes. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. Which is why they've got license to do so much cool merch. It's true. That could be why you may hear things like Tokyo Disneyland operates uh, things uh, better than uh, some of the other parks. Yeah, like in general, in Tokyo, Hong Kong, and Shanghai, whenever there's a parade with the characters or a meet and greet with them, you can see them really close to each other, very flirty with each other. And it's like, what's going on? Like, is it is there something else or not? See, I wasn't aware that those clips were coming specifically from those three parks. I thought it, like, they always just said at Disneyland or at Disney World, but they never specified, so... That's interesting. To be fair, you know, there, there are um, more Disneylands than there is a Disney World. And the only reason why it's called Walt Disney World is because it's our largest property. And fair the enough. reason why I put Walt in front of Disney World is uh, because that was to pay tribute to our founder, Walt oh, Disney. Yeah. He had this massive, massive dream of conceptualizing Epcot in a completely different way. I'm not going yeah. as much of that. Yeah, I'm aware of the story. That's a good topic for another day, but not for this podcast. Yes. yes. Uh, short and to the point, he unfortunately passed away before shovels were put in the ground and his uh, mother made sure So they that, uh, named it after him. Okay. Yep. Let's see. What else do I remember? Well, but Nick and yeah. Judy flirting Asian parks. Okay. Yeah. It's too much. Like, for instance, in... Uh, what was it? At Tokyo, from what I remember, there was this... Um, it's a combination of a spring and an Easter parade that's called the Usatama Parade. Where... Um, did Usatama... What is Usatama? U Usa comes from Usaki. That's a rabbit. And Tama, it means egg. So it's practically a rabbit egg. You see this little so egg. So it's like Easter. Kind of like Easter. Kind of. But it, it lasted for a it lasted this parade was for around two months or so. But a don't, very while ago. Please don't cancel me, Japan. I like, know nothing. You see, <laughs> like these are they have this Mickey arms and legs. It's a neck and it has rabbit ears. And everyone comes these Usatama chasers or something. You had to catch up with this uh little eggs. And the parade, it consists with Mickey and friends and, and some few other Disney characters. And Judy and Nick were the, the last ones on the parade. You could hear them also, um, well, in Japanese, obviously. You see them also asking for people to help them catch up with, the, with this little um, crazy Aggie Bunny, as is the song says. But mm -hmm. yes, like you in this parade, you could see them also dancing together, teasing each other a lot. And also in this also other um, show, well, it's called a show, but 
Uh, there, it was called Judy like and parade, Nick's, right? uh, Nick and Judy's Jumping Splash, it was, I believe. That hmm. was in summertime because um, summer in Tokyo is too hot. So what they did is this show where, uh, where the audience can get freshened up and they um, splash water all around. And oh man, I would hate to be one of the people in costumes on one of those days. Yeah, you see these dancers around uh, in front of the, the castle, the Disney castle, and you also see Judy and Nick dancing along with them. I, I'm pretty sure there are also some videos of this performance on, on YouTube. And okay. what else? Well, there's also the meet and greet with them. Um, mm -hmm. at, um, I think also something special that's right now, for instance, in Shanghai, is that now you can also go and meet Nick with his um, police uniform. Okay. okay. That wasn't the first time we saw him in his um, uh, ZPD uniform. There was actually a parade that premiered in Tokyo Disneyland. Oh, golly, I, I wish I remembered the uh, stinking name of the uh, parade, but um, they did have, or do have a float. I think it's Harmony and Color. Oh, my gosh, it came back. Yes, Harmony and Color, I believe. And um, they have a Zootopia-specific float um, where not only does uh, Nick in his ZPD uh, outfit premiere, but also a uh, character for um, Clawhauser premieres as well. I think I remember that, yeah. yes. Um, yes. Actually, on that topic of uh, changing uh, outfits, um, do you think that um, whenever we do get around to our permanent meet and greet over here, do you think that we'll see them in their new outfits from Zootopia 2? Because that's my speculation, because I've seen yeah. from the poster... It'd be pretty obvious, yeah. They also did that with other characters, like whenever you want to meet Anna and Elsa, it's with their current outfits from Frozen 2, so it will be safe to assume that they will do the same with Judy and Nick. Yeah, because seen from the poster from uh, Better Together... Yeah, it's the same outfits, yeah. The two uh, outfits. Uh, we also noticed that there seems to be a Gazelle concert going on. Uh, mm -hmm. I do know that there are rumors floating around that we might be getting a new gazelle song for uh better together that would be cool yes yeah i mean right now she's kind of a one-hit wonder so <laughs> of another pop star might be implemented in here besides shakira i don't know mm -hmm. mm, okay not sure who can could it be we'll have just have to wait and see yeah. And yeah, what other we'll find parade out. from what I remember? There was a parade in Hong Kong that was also at springtime. And Judy and Nick were leading the parade. Uh, it was kind of a like combination of songs like from that talk about spring. I, I don't remember much of the songs. I think there were some of Mary Poppins and other. I don't remember much. But I do know that uh, sometimes I will see some of the clips also on, on YouTube or Instagram where also whenever they will dance along with each other, greet the audience, wave at them and so. But at the moment they had to dance together. They will also have this also flirty behavior and mm -hmm. they will be like, huh, it's, it's too sweet to see this. And that usually makes it to like the front page of the Zootopia subreddit or whatnot whenever that happens. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Well, that is a lot of information about the parks. Thank you so much for coming on to the podcast, Dan. Well, thank and you very much. Uh, once again, it's been a pleasure. I know that I've been wanting to get around for uh, doing something like this. Uh, and, um, maybe even do a podcast my, um, on my own. Uh, of well, if you reveal your identity and decide to do so, let us know and we'll definitely promote it. <laughs> All right. One thing I forgot to mention earlier, of course, this is all brought to you by the ZNN Patreon. So if you could go down in the description, there will be a link to patreon.com slash ZNN. If you can support us, that would be fantastic. We need as much money as we can to keep the servers up and running. And and I'll be perfectly blunt, we are scraping by. So a few more donations would be very nice. <laughs> it's just, just to get past the bare minimum you know so again thank you so much and if we hit 150 dollars on the patreon we will do a special episode that you the fans pick this is in signing off and i just wanted to say that try everything and stay wild thank you for coming on it was pleasure really to have you talk, it was really fun to talk about the disney parks 
Yeah. This is definitely a fun topic, and we might have to circle back around to it once, like, we have a bit more information about stuff, you know? I have more info about the parks. Like, I, there was a time I was uh, being very geeky about the parks and check out what different um, spots you could see the characters uh, at in general and what kind of interactions they will have with the audience because that's also very something very funny. Like, sometimes they will be, like, um, very, uh, say... Affected, affectionate with the guests or sometimes they will mm -hmm. like just teasing them or try to make fun of them. There's also something really particular. Yeah, I've seen like clips of like someone giving Mrs. Incredible a hug and Mr. Incredible will be in like, you better not. Exactly. That's something I want to talk about if if the topic about Disney Parks comes up again. I'd like to talk mm -hmm. about the interactions they have, yeah. especially with guests. Yeah, and we'll probably circle back around to that at some point. All right. all right, all right. It's definitely one of my favorite topics uh, to talk about. Um, besides uh, Zootopia itself, uh, Disney is some, as a brand that means uh, quite a lot to me. So, quite a lot to all of us listening, I'd imagine. Uh, hopefully so. Yeah. Well, thank you again for coming on, and, and I'd say check out his stuff in the description. But again, keeping it safe. So, until next time. I'm Andy Legopis. And I'm Pinkstar. This is NW once again saying try everything and stay wise. Boom. <laughs>